Let's talk about reading wave heights in Unreal's water system. The water system that comes free with Unreal uses Gerstner waves to create the waves on the surface of the water. Now, I've talked about what Gerstner waves are in a previous video, but the problem is that they happen on the GPU. So even though there's only one Gerstner wave in this simulation, it's on the GPU, so I can't get any information about it. The GPU doesn't answer questions. It just throws that data away immediately. There are a lot of ways to get that data, but most of them involve installing a paid plugin instead of the free one, and those cost money, so let's see how far we can get with the free one. There is a buoyancy plugin. It already exists. That's the green dots you see here. If you have the buoyancy plugin and you don't see the green dots, uh, all you have to do is type this in at the bottom here, r.water.debugbuoyancy1. That will turn the green dots on for you. But the buoyancy system is implemented in an afternoon, and it's really only suitable for floating object. It's not really suitable for cartoon boats. It's a physics-based system that balances the mass of your object and the center of your mass and the pontoons of your flotation and how large they are and how buoyant they are. And it's got a large number of bugs. So it's not really suitable for anything more complicated than floating a box or something. If you wanted to have you know, a speedboat that can race around on top of the waves, we're going to want to be able to ask for specific heights at specific locations and use that data to create a more cartoony experience. Pardon the lack of splash effects. So how do we do that? Clearly we can get this data somehow because the buoyancy plugin get the data. There it is. It's, it's those green dots. Those are all buoyancy data. That's all wave height. You can see how they're following the waves. How do we do that? Well, the answer is um, we do it the same way the buoyancy plugin does it, but the buoyancy plugin doesn't tell you how they did it, and they don't give you any clues on how to do it. So I'm going to show you how to do it. They're using a particle system. In fact, that set of green dots, that is how they're calculating out wave height. That's not representing wave height. That's their calculations. They're using a particle system to get the wave height, and then they're reading the particles. So that's what we're going to do. If you go digging around in the bowels of the code, you will find this. This is a Niagara function script for reading and creating Gerstner waves. It's not that complicated, really, and it's something you can implement yourself if you like coding. You can translate this into a C++ function uh, just by going through and translating each line and putting it into a code file somewhere. Problem is, this isn't C++, this is HLSL, which is stuff that happens on the GPU. Uh, so, you know, translating it is not trivial, and also it has to be fed all of the information that you need to feed it, which is also non-trivial. Why don't we just use it as it is? It's a Niagara function, it's already in Niagara, it already works with Niagara, let's just use Niagara. So we'll create ourselves a Niagara f system. This is the system I've created. Three whole particles. Oh, so complicated. <clears throat> Now you can obviously do whatever you want. I'm showing you how to do this. I'm not telling you this is the right number of particles and so on. For the boat I'm using, the kind of cartoony physics I want, a triangle of water is plenty because that gives me a plane to float to and it gives me a normal to tilt to, and that's all I really need. Whether I'm traveling at speed or not, this is enough to really give me a good feel. But placing these particles is the question. Not only do we have to place them horizontally, on the plane of the boat. We also have to place them vertically on the water to represent wave height. I'm sure there's a lot of ways to do that, but the easiest way is to use a module script. If you've never used a module script before, you just right click, go into FX, go down to script, and there it is, Niagara module script. These are much easier than you might think. Don't be intimidated. It's just a way to manually control whatever you're trying to control. So if we open this up, <clears throat> Here it is. This is the whole thing. <clears throat> Pardon me. So the secret here is in what inputs you choose. We've got a local to world so that we can take the local particle point and turn it into a world coordinate and get the height of the wave in the world. We've got the buoyancy scale, which just tells us how far forward to put one point and how far off to the sides to put the others. We've got the unique ID, which just tells us which particles should go in which space. We've got the time, which obviously is necessary for calculating out waves. And here's the secret sauce, we've got water. 
This is a water body component. And Niagara knows how to interpret a water body component to get the wave height. So these are our module inputs, the water and the buoyancy scale, which is just the size of the box. The secret here is this node, get water data at point. This is only available to the water input. So this is what we need. You can't get this data any other way. It's not surfaced through the buoyancy system. It's not surfaced through the water uh, actor. It's not surfaced through the water component. It's only available here inside of Niagara. But that's the secret sauce. This is all you need right here, this one little output. The rest of this is just boilerplate. Uh, I just get which particle ID it is, so in case I accidentally spawn 85 particles, it'll just cycle through the same three coordinates forever. Uh, and then I have the three points that we're using, one in front, two off to the sides, uh, and then I convert those into world coordinates, and then I get the world coordinate, and I set the Z value to the height of the water, and then I pass that back as the position of the particle, and we're done. Now we have a particle system that will determine the wave height all the time, as long as we feed it a water body component, which is easy to do because all of the oceans and water, the, way, the, the, the lakes and the rivers, those are all water body components, so we can just pass all of them into this code. Plugging this into the water body uh, particle system, we have the buoyancy scale and the water available, and we link them up into user inputs, which means we can set these values in a blueprint, which is what we're going to be doing. But there is an issue, and that is um, all of this is also happening on the GPU. Yeah, it's basically the same problem we had before. Just like with the height of the water itself, all of this stuff is on your graphics card, and you're not getting it back. But Niagara has a workaround, and that is the export particle data to Blueprint plugin. This is something you can just plug in. You don't have to build it, you just turn it on. Uh, we say always export. You can obviously have it export data when there's a collision or whatever, however you'd like. We just tell it to always export the points, always. And we also tell it to export to a user-defined callback. In order to do this, you're going to need to have an object-based user callback. So if we were to look at this, here it is, export object callback. If we add in a new value, there it is. So you need an object. That's all you need to do, but make sure to name it something that you can remember. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time because you have to manually type in that name. So let's go over to our boat. Here's our boat. Boat. And you can see that our boat has a Niagara system you can see that the dots, that's them, that's the particles. And we can change where they are by simply changing the values over here on the buoyancy scale. See? But you notice that that's the only one we can actually manually set. These two don't have anything we can really do with them. This has values in it, but they're all nonsense. So what can we do with these? Well, unfortunately, we have to manually set them. There's just no other option. So we have to set them in code, or rather, in Blueprint. Here's the event graph for that. Here's all of the boilerplate that you're going to need to set this stuff up. So here it is, event begin play. There's a Niagara, set Niagara variable by string object. We're setting the object, the callback object. And we're setting it to us. Just make sure you get the variable name correct. This will tell it to call a callback on this object. What callback? It's called receive particle data and it's in an interface. So you come over here into class settings and you tell it to add the Niagara particle callback handler interface right down here under implemented interfaces. That will give you the ability to actually use the event receive particle data and then you can just do whatever you want with the particles. In this case, I just store them. <laughs> That's the cycle. That's how you get data out of your Niagara system. You can do whatever you want with that data, but uh, that's the big secret. That's the thing that you can't do with the ocean itself. You can't export data from the ocean, but you can export data from your particle system. 
I also have to set the water body component, which I do right here. Now I am using the buoyancy plugin to get the water because the buoyancy plugin already detects the water. So I was like, I'll just make it not do anything and just get the water. But you don't have to do this, and I think I'm going to change it out. I think I'm going to move it to just an object that collides with water. You know, a collider that just detects water. Because all I need is the water body. I don't need any of the, you know, extra dots and visualizations and stuff. But you can just use the buoyancy plugin for this. There's an event on the buoyancy that will uh, say, oh, I hit water. And at that point, you can just say, what water did you hit? And then you can set that on the Niagara system right here set water body component make sure to get the name right <laughs> that's really all there is to it from there you can do whatever you want it to do you've got the wave heights that you set the particle system up to detect and that's what we were here for the rest of this stuff is all stuff I'm just doing to control the boat and it's all you know work in progress stuff if people really want to know how I you know, tip the boat and make the boat move around I'm happy to make a more in-depth tutorial on that sort of stuff but it's in progress so it's not anywhere near ready if you have any questions let me know down below I know that this is a complicated subject but it's not something that is difficult it's just a lot of steps some hoops to jump through and that's all because it's all the stuff that's been optimized for GPU work and GPUs don't like giving you that information back so we have to get around that. An easier way to get around that would be, of course, to translate that code into C++ and just have a function. But um, this is actually less work. See you around.